Good evening to everyone and welcome to today's wonderful evening with Dr. Murli Bharadwaj. Nice to see Ravinder Singh and many more who are all online. Today it is a little late to reach from the hospital, but better late than never. Let us study every day together, at least for a while, so that you are motivated to prepare for the tomorrow's need PG. So basically, I have given you a schedule. Every Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday, four tests. Next 12 weeks, you are going to have 50 grand tests. Before hand only, we will give you the PDF uploaded as an ebook to the learnograph.com. From there, you download that. You solve the question paper and come for the discussion. And then we will chisel your basics with almost a simulating question paper in the form of mind maps, the explanatory answers for you to quickly master the subject. Can the online students can punch as the voice loud and clear for all of you, doctor? Please punch Ravinder and many more who are all online. So now let's make the great beginning. During a upper GI endoscopy, so during a upper GI endoscopy, a patient with Long standing gastroesophageal reflux symptoms. There's a transition in the mucosal appearance and is being given to you. So, what are we talking about? The Barrett's esophagus. The endoscopic image is showing a clear demarcation between the tan squamous mucosa and the pink columnar mucosa, indicating the Barrett's esophagus is what you need to remember. So you need to ask for lifestyle changes. In few cases, endoscopically radio frequency ablation of the dysplastic areas is being done. So that is the story of Barrett's. Now, a patient has symptoms of gastroesophageal reflux disease, undergoes upper GA endoscopy. The endoscopic image is Later, the gross pathology specimen of the stomach is being shown. What are the findings in this? So these are all normal findings. Why normal findings? Typically, there is a transition from esophageal squamous mucosa to gastric columnar mucosa. And this is the macroscopic pathological specimen of a normal stomach and duodenum is what you need to remember. Now, the next question. The patient presents with acute abdominal pain, history of previous abdominal surgeries. You have done exploratory laparotomy. So what did you find? You find the typical exploratory laparotomy. So what do you see here? There is a bowel obstruction because of the internal herniation with bubble infarction is what you are able to see. So this is a segment of red infarcted intestine is what you need to remember. Now, a patient presents with diarrhea. You have given broad spectrum antibiotics, colonoscopy done, mucosal appearance suggests pseudomembranous enterocolitis. So what you are able to see is the pseudomembranous enterocolitis. So what is the organism, doctor? It is Clostridium difficile is what you need to remember. The patient has severe diarrhea and uh, with the antibiotic therapy, a colonoscopic procedure is being performed and you are able to see the gross pathological specimen. And uh, what is the most likely diagnosis? 
once more after an antibiotic therapy the patient develops pseudo membranous enterocolitis is what you need to remember now during medical examination a histopathological evaluation of a coronary artery disease is being done so what type of pathology you are able to see in this typically there is no signs of atherosclerosis no impediment to blood flow that's reason it is a normal coronary artery without uh, this is a normal coronary artery without uh, atherosclerosis is what you need to remember now doctor in the process of cellular respiration citrate plays a pivotal role to regulate the flow of substrates to the metabolic pathways how does citrate control the metabolism is a very important question so fundamentally abundance of citrate abundance of atp they both are indicative of a high energy already available no need of energy generating metabolic processes to work that's the reason glycolysis will be inhibited by the citrate by inhibiting the phosphofructokinase and when there is a lot of energy you want to store it in the form of fats that's the reason citrate which is an indicator of the energy status activates the acetyl coa carboxylase and promote the fatty acid biosynthesis is what you need to remember so doctor i leave the literature for you in the form of a flow chart so it's a very easy format for you to master too many facts 34 year old woman presents with palpitations tremulousness thyroid hormones are elevated how do thyroid hormone function so one of the favorite question is secondary messengers is the favorite topic in the tomorrow's neat pg doctor it binds to the nuclear receptors acting on the transcription factor to regulate the gene expression is what you have to remember a 40 year old man presents with a long history of joint stiffness and pain his urine turns black when left exposed to air there is a bluish black discoloration of the ear cartilage what are you waiting this is a classical story of alcaptanuria so in alcaptanuria what will happen there is a joint stiffness pain urine turning black upon exposure of air there is a bluish black discoloration of the cartilage it is an autosomal recessive condition homogentisic acid oxidase deficiency that lead to accumulation of homogentisic acid deposition in the body tissues achronosis and what is the chromosome associated doctor chromosome number three and alcaptanuria the association should not be forgotten now doctor can the online students can punch is a voice loud and clear for all of you i'm looking for your response nice to see ravinder vinisha everybody now vinisha has a beautiful baby last year she is preparing for entrance this time she is preparing for entrance along with uh, her little baby so the life doesn't stop doctor you know entrances everything are the part of our life but the the personal life always is most important what is our personal success is very important because ultimately when we become doctors whom do we counsel we counsel the patients so i'm very proud of you vinisha and i wish with the kind of determination intelligence brightness that you have and perseverance vinisha is going to become a postgraduate before the first birthday of her baby so doctor let's go to the next question a southern blood analysis was done it reveals two distinct bands of dna in the lane b one at 1.15 kb other is at 1.35 kb following digestion with mstll restriction gene enzyme this is observed while undergoing genetic testing 
So based on this information, what do you like to call this as? This person is heterozygous carrying one normal and one sickle cell allele is what you need to remember. So one is 1.15 kb and other is 1.35 kb. 1.15 kb band represents normal beta globin allele with an intact MST2 restriction site. The 1.35 KB band indicates the mutant beta S globin allele, which is missing the MST2 site due to the sickle cell mutation, is what you need to remember. That's the reason it is a heterozygote, is what you need to remember. A 55 year old woman with history of hypercholesterolemia prescribed a statin to lower the cholesterol. He reports muscle pain, weakness. Increase creatinine kinase. So you need to remember that statins can lead to the development of rhabdomyolysis and myositis. And uh, what is the reason? They affect the synthesis of ubiquinone Q10, which is a very important component of the muscle cell metabolism that lead to muscle pain, weakness in some patients. And this does not correlate with the elevated creatinine kinase, which indicate the muscle injury or myositis. Then doctor, 25 year old sexually active male presents with painful genital ulcer, swollen inguinal lymph nodes, unprotected intercourse, jank smear, BDRL tests are negative. Then what is the most appropriate treatment and diagnosis? So always primary syphilis, genital herpes, chancroid, these are the three important genital ulcers. So painful genital ulcer, negative jank smear, that means it is not herpes. Negative VDRL, it is not syphilis. So the most likely diagnosis is what then? Chancroid which is caused by hemophilus ducreae, the most likely diagnosis. Chancroid is a painful genital ulcer. It lead to inguinal lymphadenopathy. And the treatment is IEM injection of 250 milligram septrioxone or a single thousand milligram in dose of azithromycin is considered to be the treatment of choice for the chancroid. Once more, doctor, the same questions, 100% strike rate in the tomorrow's need PG. If you take 50 grand tests, the mock tests with Dr. Murali Bharadwaj and solve 10,000 MCQs in the next 90 days, I'm very sure you will be the topper. Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, on Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday, four tests. We will upload the PDF into learnograph.com. Learnograph.com. I'm leaving the website address just in the below link in this uh, YouTube video. Click on that and you reach learnograph.com. There you are, there we will be uploading the Grant test ebooks. Each grant test is created into an ebook and then upload it. Download it, solve the paper, join the discussion, practice around 10,000 questions. Automatically, aapko seat will jayega. Mere jimirabi. So, 45 year old man with fever, cough, shortness of breath, chest radiography show infiltrates. Yes, with the broad based budding. Is BBB, broad based budding, is blastomycosis, is what you need to remember. So, big broad based budding is blastomycosis in the clinical specimens. A 25 year old woman presents with two week history of cough, mild fever, malaise, diffuse interstitial infiltrates, cold agglutinins. What is your answer, doctor? Mycoplasma pneumoniae, 
Cold agglutinins cause the red blood cells to clump together at low temperature. And uh, typically they are seen, cold agglutinins are seen in mycoplasma infection. There are many other causes of atypical pneumonia. So what is an atypical pneumonia? Clinically, patient will not be very symptomatic. Radiologically, you find a lot of infiltrates. That is called a typical pneumonia. So, mycoplasma pneumonia is one of the causes of a typical pneumonia. But only mycoplasma is known to lead to IgM, cold agglutinins, leading to the typical uh, clumping of RBCs. 42-year-old man with a known history of HIV AIDS typically presents with rapidly progressing neurological deficit, ataxia, difficulty speaking, CD4 count is only 45 mm, an MRI show multiple non-enhancing T2 hyperintense lesions in the white matter. What is the best way to diagnose? So this is an entity called Progressive Multifocal Leukoencephalopathy, PML. What is it because of Dr. JC virus infection? JC virus. Whenever the HIV or AIDS CD4 count decreased by less than 50, then the JC virus infection lead to progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy. Stereotactic biopsy. Stereotactic biopsy is considered to be diagnostic. It is the JC virus. It provides a diagnosis without the need for invasive biopsy. That's what you need to remember. So conduct the CSF polymerase chain reaction for JC virus is what you need to remember. A seven-year-old unvaccinated child has got fever, cough, conjunctivitis, followed by rash that spread on the face, then spread downwards. Small red spots with blue-white centers, which are called complex spots, are present inside the mouth. What is your diagnosis? Measles. Patient has increased intracranial pressure, recent episode of bacterial meningitis, enlargement of ventricles, subarachnoid space. Then what is the most likely cause? So typically it is a communicating hydrocephalus. Communicating hydrocephalus. So whenever there is any bacterial meningitis, then from the lateral ventricles, it will go into second ventricle. I mean, into third ventricle, into fourth ventricle. Ultimately, it will go into arachnoid granulations and drain into the venous system, CSF. So whenever these arachnoid granulations are typically fibrosed in bacterial meningitis that lead to the development of the hydrocaphalus, that is what this patient is typically having. A 50-year-old, 58-year-old man has history of headaches, progressive weakness of the left side. MRI show butterfly-shaped mass in the brain with a peripheral enhancement central necrosis so it is a classical histopathological finding of glioblastoma multiforme which has a pseudo palisading necrosis like layers necrosis is spread glioblastoma multiforme it is the loss of the p53 function increased activity of egfr gene and heterozygosity of chromosome 10q, they are all the ones responsible for the glioblastoma multiforme. The genetic changes you need to be very sure about. So, Doctor, cracking need PG is not at all difficult. So, Bhavya is asking a very good question. Sir, we are following your videos of previous INA papers in score app. Will it be sufficient for May session this year? More than sufficient. 
Remember Bhavya and everybody. There are 50,000 high yield facts. Once you master them, and I will give you 10,000 questions to practice in the form of 50 full scale grand tests. I upload it as a PDF into learnograph.com. Just do the revision. That's all. You will be the winner. My apko vada karta. But the only thing is consistency, perseverance, not to disappoint, not to get depressed. That is the most important thing. Have one to two very good friends. Regularly meet up with them online or offline or a cup of coffee or in a pub. Or do anything. But you need to have one to very good friends with whom you can study every day. I am one of your friend already. So that is the reason you will automatically get. That's more than enough, Bhavya. Ravinder, very good. I'm getting married, sir. Whatever. So Ravinder Singh, I'm going to fly to Chandigarh or Punjab or Amritsar. So to attend your marriage, don't forget. I love Punjabi marriages a lot. So good. So doctor, uh, I hope the voice is loud and clear for all of you. Now, 32 year old with double vision. So what is he having? He's having uh, double vision, double vision. It is worsening when looking to the right. There is the right eye fails to adapt. That's called adductor lag. It's called adductor lag. And there is a horizontal nystagmus in the left eye. But the convergence is normal. That means oculomotor is functioning. If you only check oculomotor function or only check abdicens function, they are intact. But when you try to look at the conjugate moments, when one eye is abducting, other eye need to adduct. That time, internuclear ophthalmoplegia, medial longitudinal fasciculus, is the one which connects the oculomotor with the where is oculomotor located? Midbrain. Third, fourth are in midbrain. And abdicens, fifth, sixth, seventh are in pons. So one side oculomotor connected with the other side abdicens, typically by MLF. So whenever one eye is looking abducted, the other eye will automatically adduct because of this communication called MLF. Any MLF lesion will prevent the eye from adducting when the other eye is abducting during a conjugate moment, which is called the uh, internuclear ophthalmoplegia. Which side MLF? The side where there is an adductor lag, that side there is a MLF lesion in internuclear ophthalmoplegia. A 27 year old woman presents with fatigue, pallor, recent onset of unexplained bruising, history of seizure, treated with medication, bone marrow has hypocellularity. So it is a carbamazepine which can lead to the development of aplastic anemia. 60 year old women, shipbuilding industry, coughing is there, plural plaques. Ferruginous bodies stained with Prussian blue typically is a case of mesothelioma leading to bronchogenic carcinoma. So whenever asbestosis is there, there is barbell ferruginous bodies and asbestosis is the risk factor to the development of lung cancer is what you need to remember. A 16 year old boy with known sickle cell anemia presents with severe abdominal pain and joint pain. Recently chest pain, fever, difficulty breathing, blood smear shows sickle cells. So what is the immediate step that you need to? So this is called vaso occlusive crisis clinically. In this chest pain, Hypoxemia, chest infiltrates, all triggered by the hypoxemia. Always in a sickle cell anemia patient, 
Dehydration, hypoxia, infection. They need to be treated aggressively. Otherwise, sickling become worsened. And that lead to development of acute chest syndrome is what you need to remember. So this vasoocular sucre is an indication for exchange transfusion. A patient newly diagnosed with HIV is considered for antiretroviral therapy. Nevirapin is being proposed. What are the best to, to describe mechanism of action of nevirapin? Nevirapin binds to the reverse transcriptase enzyme. Other than the active site, inhibiting the enzyme non-competitively. So it is a non-competitive inhibitor of the reverse transcriptase enzyme is what you need to remember. Once more, doctor, one MCQ, sure shot in meat PG on HIV drugs, HIV infections, HIV structure. So at least eight to ten MCQs in meat PG every year come from only HIV. Now, doctor, 55 year old man with a history of hypertension and on a beta blocker. So what is the main mechanism of beta blocker? In angina, how does it help? Beta blocker inhibits the beta 1 receptors which are there on the heart. Which are there on the heart. One minute, doctor. I'll just take a, take a patient. Patient is calling from the hospital. Hello? Okay, Namma. Nen Chaptan, Abhishek Chaptan. Already antibiotics, you investigations have been chasing pumping them. Okay, ma? Yeah. So today I admitted one uh, uh, case of gangrene. So just now shifted the patient to the hospital. She had a paralysis, diabetes in the background, peripheral vascular disease leading to the development of gangrene. Tomorrow we are going to do the amputation of the toe and uh, treat her. So just now I ordered for uh, all her basic surgical workup. So even though we are consultant, a consultant job is a glorified resident. So all responsibilities stay on your head. That's the whole challenge. So let's make the grid restart. Yeah. So it is a beta one. What type of receptor, doctor? Beta one in the heart leads to decreased heart rate and contractility and myocardial oxygen demand comes down and that treats the angina is what you need to remember. 45 year old, long standing, type 2 diabetes, chronic heartburn, regurgitation, esophageal dysmotility, what is the first line of treatment? So whenever there is a long standing diabetes, it leads to esophageal dysmotility. So metaclopramide is the one which is given to manage the gastroparesis. Similarly, cisapride. It is available as a brand called Geneton tablet. Brand name is Geneton, 50 milligrams, twice daily. So whenever there is a esophageal dysmotility in long-standing diabetes, we give the mozapride, etc., etc. 34-year-old women with the symptoms of hyperthyroidism, weight loss, palpitations. She started on a medication that stops the thyroid hormone synthesis. So, which medication most likely is prescribed and uh, what is a adverse effect of it that need to be monitored? It is a propyl thiouracil, always two important drugs, doctor, amiodarone and PTU. Whenever you administer, you need to keep a watch on the WBC count. So a granulocytosis can be caused 
by propyl thiouracil is what you need to remember. 50 year old man who works with exposure of nitroglycerin presents with headache, chest pain that worsen on the weekend, particularly on the Mondays. So how do you like to call this Monday disease because of the nitroglycerin withdrawal? Typically, there is a development of the Monday disease. 35 year old fatigue, bruising, DIC, abundant promyelocytes, Ethrophilic granules, this is an example of APML, acute promyelocytic leukemia. All trans retinoic acid is a one, ATRA, which is revolutionized the treatment. ATRA will induce the differentiation of the malignant promyelocytes, which are in a de-differentiated state. So, what is the main pathophysiology of APML? T1517 and ATRA, all trans retinoic acid in the first line treatment of the APL is what you need to remember. But what is the worst thing about APML? APML can lead to DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation, which can cause death of the patient. A 45 year old man, two months post kidney transplant, presents with elevated creatinine, decreased urine output. There is an infiltration of cytotoxic T cells. What type of rejection you call? Acute rejection. So, typically, you need to know acute rejection occurs anytime after the transplant, but is most likely in the first three months. First three months. It is the CD8 T cells which mediate it. And what is hyperacute rejection? Hyperacute rejection occurs because of the preformed antibodies, which will slow down the process. Typically, preformed antibodies will, uh, the moment, that's the reason whenever you are planning transplant in the near future, don't do too many transfusions because every time you are doing transfusion, there is auto antibodies developing and the moment you put the kidney it will be knocked out they are the preformed antibodies that is hyperacute rejection chronic rejection is a very slow process fibrosis is responsible that's the story of rejection transplant rejection six month old infant presents with recurrent severe infections bacterial pneumonia candidiasis Reduce level of both the T, both the T and also B lymphocytes. How do you want to treat? So this is a classical story of recurrent severe infections. Reduce level of T and also B means severe combined immunodeficiency. Bone marrow transplantation is the only treatment of skin is what you need to remember. One of the favorite MCQ. 45-year-old women presents with morning stiffness, symmetrical joint swelling, anticyclic citrullinated peptide antibodies are elevated. So what is the mechanism? Which of the following is very important to play a reparative role in the pathophysiology of the heart condition by inhibiting the T lymphocyte activation and proliferation. Co inhibit the carnevala kya hota hai TGF beta. So, one question on cytokines. Every neat PG, there is a question, doctor, be very sure. While studying the skin's immune defenses, student learns about a specific type of dendritic cell located in the epidermis. It has Beerbeck granules. Beerbeck granules. So, what are the cells that have Beerbeck granules? Langerhans cells typically. They are of the shape of a tennis racket. Tennis racket appearance. Tennis racket appearance. Beerbeck granules. Langerhans cells. Don't forget. A pregnant woman with RH negative blood is found to have anti RH antibodies during prenatal screening. So the finding that suggests a risk for which are the following 
in her current or future pregnancy if the fetus is rh positive obviously hemolytic disease of the newborn now a 6 year old child presents with midline neck pass that moves on swallowing mass is located below the hyoid but thyroid function tests are normal it is a cystic lesion and the normal thyroid gland is located inferiorly so what is the diagnosis doctor thyroglossal duct cyst because of its midline location movement with swallowing presence of a normal functioning thyroid gland so surgical excision called cyst trunk operation where there is a removal of the cyst along with the middle part of the hyoid bone is called cyst trunk operation is the one which need to be done in this given case so very good can ravinder vinisha bhavya and many more who are all online uh so so i am really thankful to all our wonderful students who are present today uh to give me company at this late hour so we are in the middle of the war so let us fight the war doctor and win the game right so a uh, few more questions we will solve before we say good night to each other now doctor 10 year old frequent headaches increased uh, increased thirst urination child bumps into objects when navigating through space mass in cella tarsica bitemporal hemianopia so what is this doctor this is cranio pharyngioma is the typical thing that you need to remember so increased thirst and urination so what does it indicate diabetes insipidus so typically it is a supratentorial mass lesion it is the most common in children at this location it is derived from rat case pouch it lead to visual symptoms and endocrine symptoms treatment is surgery and radiotherapy is what you have to remember now doctor a 6 month old infant mother mentions that her son had difficulty urinating and recently had a fever the pediatrician notes that urethral meatus is located on the ventral side of the penis rather than at the tip so what do you want to do you need to take a surgical consultation for the hypospadias because this involves urethral opening he will not be able to pass urine normally immediate antibiotic therapy is needed definitely for current uti but surgical consultation and treatment is considered to be the most important intervention to be remembered a pregnant woman in her first trimester is advised to start folate it will decrease neural tube defects easy question two year old child with recurrent infection facial dysmorphia convulsions hypercalcemia 
congenital heart defects so dijorge syndrome so there is a t lymphocyte immunodeficiency hypocalcemia due to hypoparathyroidism congenital heart defects facial dysmorphia that is all suggestive of dijorge third and fourth ventric pharyngeal pouches are defective that lead to under development of thymus under development of parathyroid is what you need to remember in a cohort study you are evaluating vitamin d is efficient 50 out of 350 showed improvement 60 out of 460 not receiving supplementation also showed improvement जिसको जिसने कोचिंग लिया उसको भी सीट मिला जो कोचिंग नहीं लिया उसको भी मिल गया जिसने कोचिंग लिया उनको नहीं मिला जिसको नहीं लिया उसको भी नहीं मिला अरे दैट इज कॉल्ड रिलेटिव रिस्क हियर द रिलेटिव रिस्क इज 1.1 सजेस्टिंग द चांस इफ यू टेक द विटामिन डी देयर इज अ 10% हायर चांस ऑफ द बेनिफिट देन नॉट टेकिंग इज व्हाट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर A 23-year-old complains of daytime sleepiness despite adequate nighttime sleep. He has sudden muscle weakness when laughing and has episodes where he could not move on, move upon waking up. So this is typically called as excessive daytime sleepiness cataplexy sleep paralysis with hypnagogic and hypnopompic hallucinations what do you call that narcolepsy what is the treatment modafinil modafinil is the amphetamine derivative which is the first line of treatment to manage the excessive daytime sleepiness is what you need to remember so doctors don't forget learnograph.com today only visit i am leaving the link below this youtube video there you have all the ebooks of each subject mind map 150 mind maps may each subject is revised you just require 8 hours to revise this 150 mind maps on each subject so all the 19 subjects we are uploading already three subjects we uploaded additionally 50 full scale grant test each grant test is along with explanation mind maps is created into a ebook and hosted on the lagnograph.com you can pay and download the pdf where you get all this info now doctor During a therapy session a patient expresses anger towards her therapist after her romantic advances are declined the therapist recognizes this re reaction as projection of the patient's feelings towards individuals in her personal life so what is this phenomena called negative transference so the patient's display of anger towards the therapist following the rejection of her sexual advances indicate negative transference so sometimes the patients feel the doctor is the daddy doctor is the hubby doctor is the boyfriend doctor is everything doctor is the gigolo oh man what can doctor do that's called negative transference that's reason as doctors we are trained to find a border point to not let the other party step into your personal life similarly your personal feelings at home where you fought with your boyfriend wife or girlfriend should not step on to the patient that's very important so that is a negative transference 35 year old woman presents with history of fluctuating mood states including significant depression she never experienced a full maniac episode so it is called hypomaniac episode it's called bipolar 2 disorder and treated with lithium lithium's main side effect is nephrogenic diabetes insipidus so lithium is a common mood stabilizer for treating the bipolar disorders and uh, 
at least one hypomaniac episode without any mixed or maniac episodes and one major depressive episode defines the bipolar 2 disorder is what you need to remember. A four-year-old boy is being brought because of the fecal incontinence. The child had been toilet trained for over a year but recently began experience episodes of soiling in his underwear. What is the fruit psychosexual stage during which the stay the child most likely experienced a conflict and that is responsible for this episodes of soiling. It's called anal stage. It is related to control of the autonomy issues. So anal stage is between 18 to 3 years. Control of autonomy particularly related to toilet training. If there is any conflict in that stage, that lead to encopresis, encopresis or fecal incontinence. In a child who already being toilet trained, if encopresis develops because he is already four years, between 18 to 30, three years only he had been, 18 months to three years only he had been toilet trained. So now he is developing encopresis means he is developing regression is what you have to basically remember. So that is all the story, doctor. Thanks for a patient listening. Hum rose milenge, rose padenge, ek din kamyaab banke dunya ko badayenge, bhai. Mera seat aagaya, mera rank aagaya, mera number aagaya. And that is the day. Send me a laddu on the WhatsApp. I'll be the happiest person. In the past 25 years, I had chance to inspire wonderful guys like you. They were all sitting like you with uncertainty. Today, they are top neurosurgeons, cardiologists, cardiothoracic surgeons. And I have the privilege to practice along with my students in the TX hospital at Hyderabad. So, doctor, one day we will become the colleagues and consultants together. With that dream, Start your day, work throughout 90 days is a wonderful time, even if you have started now. So every day we will meet. Sometimes I'm a bit late in the hospital, but before I go to sleep, I make the point that I sit with you, study with you, and become your classmate, roommate, table mate, bench mate, to hold your hand, to take you to the counseling, only that we should dream when we go to the sleep tonight. Good night.